Welcome and thank you for tuning in. You're listening to the Beyond 50 radio program. I'm Daniel Davis. For many of you out there who are looking for work, perhaps pursuing a career at the age of 50 and beyond, you're thinking about something altogether different. The question is, is how do you go about approaching it? After all, you've done your research, you've certainly looked at companies that you want to perhaps approach, but maybe there's another way that you can go about things. Joining us here on the program today, our guest has spent his 40 years of experience by bringing networkers from a multitude of industries and professions. He's learned how to master what is considered to be the five most important parts of a networking meeting, construct key questions to lead a discussion, break into the invisible hidden job market, and more practices that can be done within 20 minutes. He's also a multi-award winning author, national speaker, and executive career and job search coach at Career Innovation LLC, which is a consultancy that helps all experienced levels of job seekers from across the country. I'd like to talk with him today about his book, The 20-Minute Network Meeting. I'd like to welcome to the Beyond 50 radio program today our guest, Nathan Perez. Nathan, thank you for being on the program today. Thanks for having me, Daniel. Good morning to you. Now, this is a big niche that's certainly been covered over the decades. How does this book actually emerge as something different that our listeners should feel encouraged about? Right. Uh, that's a really good question. It, it's because it redefines networking. Networking tends to have sort of a, a negative connotation to it, right? It's it's that slick and smooth or that name dropping or that, that salesy kind of thing when really um, it's just a word networking. And so what it does instead is it, it redefines it by showing that networking is just about information gathering. Well, absolutely. You know, trying to find out what you need to know before you actually move on things. So let's talk about networking really as far as what people should be considering as they go to, about doing it. Sure. Where, do you, uh, as, uh, where would you like to start? <laughs> uh, start from the beginning, I guess. <laughs> it's day one. They're, no. you know, they, they're, they're ready to step out into the world and, and, make that, and take the next uh, steps. Right. Okay. So uh, the thing is about networking. Well, let's first establish how important it is. Um, and maybe we can start. I'll, kind of, I'll throw a statistic out there. Would that be useful? Absolutely. Sure. All right. So, um, so when it comes to job search and career development, you may, you may have already heard uh, especially if you're in the business world, that, that networking is the most important part of finding a job. And the statistic comes from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, and that is uh, that between 70 and 80 percent of all jobs, okay, all jobs are obtained through the people that we know. And the people that we know comprise our network. Now, I'm really emphasizing 70 to 80 um, percent to, to make a point. If that didn't strike you, uh, as something really important, here's a different way of looking at it. 70 to 80% of all jobs are not posted, okay? That means that the other 20 or 30% of jobs um, that are posted are available to anybody who has a device, and those would be our competition. So if you've ever had an experience or talked to a friend or a family member who said, man, I can't even get a, an interview, I can't even get a phone call, this is the reason why. And what that does is all those um, jobs that, that are not posted make up what's called the invisible or the hidden job market. It's a real thing. It really does exist. And the way that it works is by word of mouth. And word of mouth is networking. So when it comes to trying to find a job, you actually, you're going to stand much better chance um, looking for that job and gathering information through the people that you know and through the people that you meet uh, through them. <laughs> So that is um, critically important when it comes to, to, to getting a job. The, the days of trying to find a job online, um, it's always been difficult. And this is actually the way that it's always been. Now what we're doing with, uh, with these books, the first one was written in 2012, is to relook at, at this relationship building thing and using your network to get the job that you really, really want. Now, I like how you outlined in your book uh, in one chapter on the 20-minute networking meeting cheat sheet. Let's talk about how that works uh, because, again, you know, this is about an impression that a person goes out and they, they make while gathering information all at the same time and not wasting a lot of time. Uh, right. So at the, back, at the back of the book, 
Um, there are there are cheat sheets, and then there's some uh, some planners and how to go about this. What that does is it kind of distills the entire model of those five steps of the book into something that you can take with you to to be prepared. It's extremely important to be prepared for your networking meetings. Um, usually, what happens is folks go into a meeting thinking that you need to spend an hour and, and given all of your background, and, and then hoping that person can do something for you. When really you should have an agenda. And you should have, I should, the first step is that you have done research on the people that you're going to meet with. Uh, there is no reason to, to meet with somebody believing that they can help you if you've really not done any research on them and their company. So um, these cheat sheets allow you to pull together the steps all in one little spot to make sure that you're asking the questions that you need to ask. It shows you how to formulate the questions in order to get the information that you need that informs the job search or your career development. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely, you know, because you're taking a look at something that uh, you know, there has to be balance, you know, and I was really uh I was really enjoying especially the area in your book where you're talking about different myths that people seem to have. Uh I give you an example. It's helpful for others to have the chance to meet with me. You know, the idea of entitlement to a certain degree because maybe you had pool or influence where you were in the past, but this is something totally different in a bigger world, isn't it? Uh, oh, absolutely. Um, you know, we've had – so some of those myths, uh, you know, maybe I'm wasting my time or networking is just schmoozing. The longer the meeting, the better. It's helpful to give others the chance to meet with me a lot. You know, there, there are executives out there who've had a lot of experience and the believe, you know, I'm, I'm in a higher position, I'm in a better spot. Um, so it's better for you to be meeting with me when really we all need help uh, and we all need information. It doesn't matter what your experience level is. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. When it comes down to it, no one really escapes that statistic that I gave, 70 to 80%, whether you are someone, I used to, you know, I, I did everything from uh, bus tables to bartending to teaching, and these days I, I coach senior executives. And then in retrospect, looking back, um, we all have to approach our job search in the same way. And these myths, uh, they apply to everybody. Um, you know, off the cuff, holding a meeting that's sort of off the cuff, a lot of people believe that, uh, you know, I'll figure out what I need to talk about when I get there. But that doesn't really honor the time of the other person, and it certainly doesn't honor your own time. And when you walk away from it, were you, did you gather specific information, or did you just gather general stuff? How often do you find people actually do that? Wh which part? Gathering just general information. M more frequently than I would have ever guessed. Because of these books, I get lots of requests to network with people, and um, uh, because I'm known as like, you know, the, the networking expert, but they haven't read the book. And they'll be perfectly happy to sit, you know, on video or across from one another with a smile and their coffee and sort of wait for me to kind of lead the discussion, but they've called the meeting. And so on the other side of the table, it's not really clear what exactly you want to talk about or know about. So it feels more like it could be like an interview on my side. I'm being interviewed for something, but but if it's not specific in what I'm being asked, and this, this works this way for everybody, you kind of have to guess at what that person is looking for by what they've already told you. And when that all happens, you can already see it's kind of like this chaotic little meeting. It just kind of goes all directions of the compass, and it's not really focused. Um, so it happens frequently. Um, people don't really know what to be asking or, or what to do and try and gather the information along the way. Now, let's talk about uh, uh, some good starting steps for our listeners out there as they go to pick up your book, The 20-Minute Networking Meeting, on how they should approach this, how they should be prepared. Right. You should be prepared with an agenda and your research. I had mentioned this earlier. You can't expect anybody to be able to help you if you, <laughs> if you don't know about them and, and you know, what, how they can actually help you. Um, it, would you mind, uh, there's, there's two parts to this that I wanted to answer. W will you repeat your question for me? So the idea is, well, as the listeners are listening right now, okay, how yeah. do they prepare? What are the first necessary couple of steps they should prepare before they ever step out their own door into another door? I guess. Right, research and, a, and an agenda. 
Um, in this case, when it comes to the 20-minute networking meeting, you, you're only asking five key questions. And the first three are designed very specifically for your contact. But you can't know exactly what questions that you, you want to ask them if you haven't already uh, done that research. And, and so the agenda, what that does is it keeps things on track. You have those very specific three questions that you want to ask. And then the fourth and fifth question, the fourth question is actually asking for more names because you want to kind of continue this process of meeting uh, additional people to get additional information. And then the fifth question, and this is the most critical one in my opinion, the fifth question is actually, how can I help you? How can I help you for giving me, you know, for giving me this information and your time? How can I help you by the ways that I can help you? One of the key parts of this book, this is what the books are uh, um, founded on, is gratitude and reciprocity. Um, that is something that hasn't been part of business for much of the time that we've known business. Business tends to be transactional. I've got something you want. You've got something that I want. Maybe that involves money. We do that exchange and we kind of move on. But we've never really put in help for the sake of help inside a business. And when you do, and I've got just about 10 years of, of these books showing that, when you do, it opens up the world in a huge way to more information, not just with that person, but people that they may introduce you to and even complete strangers because people tend to understand um, that what kind of networker you are, what kind of business person you are. Wow, this person has all this experience doing this and they're willing to give me this information just because I gave them information around things that they wanted to know. So uh, research and an agenda, those are the two biggest ways to prepare for it. You know, that's really an interesting point of view that you made about when you say, you know, what can I do to help you? Uh, I remember going to places, for instance, uh, business meetings where, uh, what do you want to call it, like chamber of commerce where people get around and they talk about their businesses and so forth. And it seemed like everybody there was reaching out to find somebody who would actually give them money. <laughs> you know, right. And, right. and get business for themselves. And it's like, well, how come anybody, but nobody's really offering an opportunity to say, you know, here's something that I think would really be valuable for your business from the point of view of what I do. For instance, uh, I would be bringing radio and broadcasting. Well, let's sit down and talk about some things that, as I was listening to you, that might help. See, there's no real connection there as far as what is my further agenda in as much as this really might help your business out. Boom. You know, and the next thing you know, like you said, right. the gratitude kind of becomes reciprocal. And then it's, you know, this guy, Daniel, I think would really do, you know, and the next thing you know, you're building things and seeing things unfold that you didn't expect. Had you went in thinking, I'm going to go after this guy and see if I can get some advertising, you know, income out of him. <laughs> right. Kind of a thing. That makes right. sense. That has been the traditional approach of things for the most part is when, when networking groups get together or any kind of organization gets together, what you'll find lots of times is that uh, people will be throwing out information in hopes to receive. So in other words, you know, I, I'm trying to get something rather than give something. So people give their pitch and, and, and they're looking for this and they're looking for that rather than giving information that's going to help other people. Once you start to do that, give information that's going to help other people, things change, and you feel it immediately. And it's because, and, all, and we're all in the position to be able to get this perspective. If, if we're in the position where someone else says, hey, Nathan, you know, you're a professional speaker and you're an executive coach. I know a couple of people who are looking for someone like you. Would you like me to, to get them in touch with you or, or vice versa? Well, that's a wonderful offer. That's a wonderful opportunity for me. And when someone offers uh, something that's helpful like that, you, it's, it's hard not to feel like, gosh, thank you so much. How can I help you in return? And that's a very different meaning than if we were to sit in a room and someone says, okay, everybody, I'm looking for X, Y, and Z for sales and business development. Anybody got anything? Well, you know, people tend to be a little bit quiet because now you're sort of doing a task. It's like a task that you're trying to accomplish for someone else, rather than feeling the feeling of gratitude and saying, you know, that's helpful to me. How can I help you? Here's some ideas I have, and there's A, B, and C. Two very different things in, in the same meeting, and it's just a slight change. Rather than asking for what you need, you give what others may need instead. I know, and it's fascinating, too, because, you know, I, and I'm kind of using my perspective so people can get an idea clearly about what it is we're talking about right now, where you're not going in thinking, 
And you may be unemployed, but you're out there trying to network to find yourself maybe not in that position anymore. So I'm looking for a job. How can you, you know, can you hire me sort of a thing? But shifting that perspective to what can I bring to the table that I could offer right now that doesn't require that at this time, I tell people over and over and over and over and over again, especially if they want to change careers and pursue their dreams, one of the best ways that you could do this is through volunteering. It doesn't cost anybody anything except right. for your time. But you also get invaluable experience at the same time, and it shows your desire and willingness to want to go out there and do this. Now, like in the perspective right. where I would be sitting at a meeting, for instance, and I'm listening to somebody who may be a carpet cleaner, and they describe what it is, you know, how they go about getting rid of dog stains, let's say. <laughs> and I think, right. you know, afterwards you might say, for instance, you know, I listened to that and I never heard anybody who actually cleans carpets use that approach before. Would you be interested in talking about that on the program sort of a thing? Uh, maybe right. you know, clean space and all of a sudden they just light up like, wow, I'm going to be kind of like a radio star kind of a thing. What is this going to cost me? Well, it isn't. I thought it was a unique perspective and I wanted my listeners to know about this, you know. And the next thing you know, you start getting phone calls or emails based on just that simple bit of reaching out. And it's amazing where it takes you because even though you may be able to give somebody, <clears throat> let's say, for instance, a little bit of a game plan on how to advertise their business differently than they traditionally know about. Like, you know, you buy an ad at a newspaper, magazine, or even a radio spot. I'll say, have you considered these kinds of things? And it refreshes right. them. Now, even though you may arm them with the, let's call them, some of the tools about going about that, eventually they're going to realize, well, you know, I'm a little too busy for this. <laughs> Can I just go ahead and pay you to do that? <laughs> and it changes <laughs> right. everything. Do you see where I'm coming from there? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, it's like somebody can teach you how to build a website. But a lot of times, I'd say at least seven out of ten people, it isn't because they, you know, they're dumb or anything. It's just it's a brand new thing, a new skill they're learning, and so they can feel intimidated and think, you know, I just have a lot of confidence in what you share. Why don't I just pay you to do that for me? Boom, and you're done. Just like that. Yeah, absolutely. We, um, you know, here's the thing: we inherently, as human beings, we we trust one another. And so we could have seen a write-up on any organization that helps you clean the carpet. And, and, but still kind of what we're waiting for is like, yeah, but it, are they good? And that's where the star rating system comes in for just about anything. So like on Amazon, right, how many reviews and, and so forth. But once you hear from a single person and that one single person that you, know, that you know, and maybe even just a little bit that you know, they say, I had a great experience with that carpet cleaning service. Uh, yeah, really? Yeah, and they did X, Y, and Z. And that 10-second conversation makes that person look a little closer, and now they, they call them up. And they say, I was referred to you by, you know, so-and-so. And, and it was just a 10-second conversation versus reading 10 or 15 reviews that might have been on the web um, because we inherently trust one another. I totally agree with that. You know, and I was thinking, too, we're in a day and an age of technology where people think that, for instance, uh, websites like LinkedIn or Facebook, uh, it's kind of like the days of old. Whatever I can do, perhaps because I feel introverted or maybe shy, I'll let something else do the talking for me, and hopefully I'll just get to answer questions. And you find yourself, it doesn't matter how evolved technology gets, it's still the same set of circumstances. You're still going to have to connect and meet with people, aren't you? Right. That's absolutely right. It, it so happens that I have, uh, I have 30,000 connections, first degree connections on LinkedIn. LinkedIn works on the premise of three degrees of separation, right? So if I've got 30,000 first degree connections, then the second ring out is all the, the people that are connected to any single individual that I'm directly connected to. And then one more ring out. But the thing is, and I was cited a few years back uh, by the Huffington Post as being one of the most linked people in the world. Um, wow. I, I don't know if that's still the case, but uh, it does allow me to, to say this. Those 30,000 connections are essentially useless because it is just a number. And to your point, it's going to remain a number until I actually reach out and establish or reestablish contact with people. You have to make the contact. It's all about people. It, it, it's a people activity. 
And, um, you know, you mentioned, if you don't mind, I'm going to go back. You mentioned being introverted or shy. Um, it also so happens that I am a, I'm an introvert. Um, no, I would never even this, guess something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I hear that a lot. I hear that a lot. But here's the thing about it. So I'm a formally trained professional actor. I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts, Theater Arts, Emphasis Acting, and I spent 20 years in the industry, mostly New York City, uh, a handful of years out in Hollywood. And I had the opportunity to do film and television and commercials and musicals and print and all these different things. But it has never changed the fact, working with all of those audiences or working in front of cameras, it doesn't change the fact that I'm an introvert. Now, what defines an extrovert is, is, is someone who, who recharges and they get their energy when they've been around big groups of people. And by contrast, what defines an introvert is someone who recharges and gets that energy when they've had a sufficient amount of time to, to self-reflect. And I certainly fall in that category. But here is my point. This networking thing um, is just a skill. It's like any other skill that's out there. It can be learned. All you have to do is put some process to it and practice it. And, and as we mentioned earlier in the program, you have specific goals. So you've got a, a, a process that helps you be specific so that you're not wasting someone else's time or yours as well. You know, it's getting down to the, to the nitty-gritty sort of a thing. And you think about like what has happened last year and what we're into now with the time of COVID. How do you see the game being changed a little bit or is it, at least for the time being? Right. Well, it is changing. And, and here's the thing when it comes to as, as it relates to networking, it's gotten even better. This is the best time like ever to be networking. And the reason why is um, the tech and this COVID thing. It actually by default tossed us all into learning how to use it because we've had to. And because of that, now there's a familiarity. Now, I've been using video for networking for a number of years before we hit last year. And, and the people, you know, I, I always offer, do you want to do video? It's becoming more of a norm. And people are like, nah, nah. And then this year, everybody's yes, because everybody's getting used to it. And the thing is, with 5G that's now turned on, and it's turned on globally, that network is 25 times faster than what we've got right now. So we can expect this to actually grow. And not only that, they're already beginning to talk about 6G, if you can believe that. So... Things have changed, but they've changed for the better when it comes to being able to hop online conveniently and, and meet with people. And, and I'm not just saying that from our standpoint, the people who must reach out to network, I'm saying it from the other standpoint as well. And the reason why is because if you just really think about it, between all of us now f being familiar with the tech, we also have pandemic boredom. <laughs> we've been locked inside. We've been a lot less social than we've been. We're not going to the workplace. We're not going to the coffee places, you know, the restaurants and movie theaters like we used to. And so if you, having had the experience, having stayed at home so much in this last year, have felt like, you know, cabin fever, as we've kind of known it, um, so do other people, everybody. And, and because it's so convenient and we don't have the commutes that take, you know, 30 minutes, whatever, an hour for some people, uh, both directions, that's a couple of hours of freed up time. Plus, we don't have to work uh, directly on the job stuff. Now we've got flexibility to do what we must in the way that we must throughout the day, and that frees up a lot of time on the other side for people to network. So it's definitely changed, but it's really changed for the better. The most challenging thing is you know, making sure that you, you have your computer updates <laughs> when you go to sign on into your video platform to make sure you're not, you know, late. And that's really about it. But otherwise, especially as we talk about it in the, in the, as, as far as the, uh, the steps of the 20-minute 20 net, 20 networking meeting, it's the same. It's the absolute same. Can I really quick, would you mind, Danny, if I, if I just mention the steps so that way I can kind of make Yes, point? absolutely, please. All right, so the steps of the 20-minute networking meeting is uh, a great first impression of you, a 30 to 60-second snapshot of your professional background. Um, then there's the discussion, and that's the bulk of your meeting. That lasts about um, 12 to 15 min minutes. And I should say each one of these steps has a time limit, okay? So a great first impression of you, 30 to 60-second overview of your background, the discussion, wrapping up the meeting, and then following up afterward. That's it. And if these things sound familiar to you, it's probably because you've been doing these things 
all along, just without that process that I was talking about, and maybe without the practice. And, and it isn't hard to do either. I mean, you can network in any situation that you encounter somebody. It could be you're Absolutely. going to the store and buying bread for crying out loud. <laughs> you know, that's right. the thing. I think sometimes when people think of networking, they think of there is a meeting that I meet up with a group of people somewhere in time. And it can happen at any given time. I remember Richard Bowles, best-selling author of What Color Is Your Parachute? You know, that was one of the things he talked about in his book is you just talk to anybody and everybody about what it is you do. It could be casual conversation, but if this is somebody that you know you might bump into more regularly, like the person, the clerk at the store, you know, whatever the case is, these are opportunities for other people to be helping you look for whatever it is that you're trying to pursue. And by the same token, as we were talking about earlier, showing the gratitude by giving something as well. Absolutely. So, so uh, let's run with that example that you gave, right? Uh, bread. Let's say bread. You're, you've gone to the grocery store and, and you're standing in the bread aisle. And you've heard about this certain bread and whether you should get it because it's healthier, it's whatever, whatever. But there's someone standing there who has it in their hand. And you ask them, can I just ask you, it sounds like a strange question, but have you eaten that bread a lot? I mean, is it, is it really good? And that person, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a really good bread and so is that one and that one. Really, are you able to tell me why? Uh, well, because that one's really, really healthy and it has this, that, and the other, and this one is a lighter bread. And you say, thank you so much. That right there is a networking scenario. All you're doing is just exchanging information. But then imagine that you run into each other a week later, but this time you're in the juice aisle, and you recognize the person, and they're getting juice, and you're standing there with the juice in your hand. And they say, hey, how are you? How was your last week? Oh, it was really, really good. So what did you think of the bread? I thought the bread was really good. I'm looking for juice. Oh, well, here's this juice and this juice. And now it's information exchange again, and it's still networking. And now imagine that we see each other at the park. And what we have to pull from now are two conversations that we had in the past couple of weeks. They weren't very long. We just exchanged some information. But now there's sort of a familiarity that's there between people. And, and now we're just feel a little more comfortable talking about stuff. Now, what do we have in common? Sure, the bread, sure, the juice, but we also have the grocery store and the fact that we're humans and have to get these things to begin with. Now we feel comfortable. Now we're at the park. And maybe we bring up bread and juice, maybe we don't, but then we just have a conversation because now what we have in common also is the park. How often do you come here? How is the weather? Uh, I used to bring my kids here. I come here. There's a great path that's over there. I take my dog on it. I wasn't aware of that path. And it just keeps going. And now we've actually known each other. We might even tell each other our names. And then maybe a week after that or uh, so forth and so on, what we end up learning is more about each other, where we work. Oh, you work over there? I actually applied for a job over there. Did you really? What happened? I know the HR manager. Oh, you do? I do. Yeah, I worked with them for a little while in this kind of capacity and, and so forth and so on. And the next thing you know, your bread conversation took in, turned into a possible job opportunity. It works like this all the time, everywhere, on every level. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it is. If you look at networking just a different way, it's not about being slick and smooth. It's just about the information exchange and gathering. Yeah, and you know, and it's an amazing process, and it doesn't have to be as uh, work oriented as people tend to make it seem. It can actually be quite a bit of fun, especially right. if your intention For is sure. not to score right in the opening act. You know that you're just getting to know people, but you're getting to know people with an intention at the same time. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I think something important to mention is that. Um, should you ever be in a networking meeting, what you are not doing is asking for a job. And, and here's the reason why. It, you put them in a kind of an uncomfortable position, and, and you can just put yourself in their shoes, right? Someone says to you, you're having a conversation, you're like, I'm looking for, your job, for a job. Does your, does your company have anything? Well, it might not be that person's job responsibility to know. And when you ask someone for a job if they heard anything or you ask them, hey, can you keep your ear out for me? Well, you got to remember, right? Other people have their lives too. They're also very busy individuals. And now you've given them a task to keep an eye or ear out for a job for you when it's actually our own responsibility to be tracking those things down. So in a networking meeting, that's not what you would do anyway. Again, what you're doing is gathering information 
that would inform your job change or your job uh, transition or, or just getting one altogether. Does that make sense? Absolutely, you know, and then in the end, uh, as we were talking about gratitude is, you know, send out a little thank you, whatever the case is, just for even some of their time and some of the information. And I think one enjoyable book I remember reading back in the 80s was uh, Harvey McKay, How to Swim with Sharks Without Being Eaten Alive, and how he would catch these little things that people would say and turn them into a big thing so that you would be remembered. <laughs> and I think one of the examples right. was Tom Brokaw, <laughs> where he had just slightly mentioned that I guess he had played some tennis in college. So apparently Harvey McKay set him this six-foot tennis racket. <laughs> He's like, that was such a little <laughs> you know, comment that I made, but that he highlighted that, you know, now I'll never forget this guy. And a lot of times people forget about simple things like that, maybe a thank you card, if you know, that situation occurs where you get that kind of information from somebody. And then in that card, it isn't just a thank you, it was great meeting you, but something little in there, like you caught something in the conversation and you highlight that and make it big, magnify it. And it changes the game quite a bit because you do want to be remembered from the kinds of uh, encounters that you have, correct? Yes, absolutely. Uh, gratitude. I mean, when you, if you can think at any time someone says, thank you so much for the information and the time you give me, that feels really good. And just imagine, because when was the last time any of us re received like a handwritten thank you, right? If you can think the most recent time when someone hand wrote a note, how special that actually feels. Um, and, and people tend to remember you fondly uh, when, when you've expressed gratitude in this way. And when people, when people remember you fondly, they also tend to think of you first professionally. Actually, this reminds me of, of a story. Can I tell you a story real sure, quick? Sure, absolutely. Okay, so I gave a, I, I gave a networking pr presentation to a, a large group of executives. And, and in the back of the room, there was a student. And he was standing there with like a broom. Um, he was cleaning. And this was in the evening. And, and he stood back there and he listened to the whole thing. And he approached me afterward. Because in the book, we give a whole list of ideas of how you can give back to other people to express this gratitude. And one of them was, you know, if you have a budget, maybe um, you can get them a coffee card. And he says, well, Nathan, this is really great. I learned so much. Um, but what happens for someone like me who doesn't have a budget? You know, I'm a student. I don't have that kind of money. And he was wearing a, a Field and Stream jacket. And Field and Stream, if, you, if you're not familiar with it, is like this hunting and fishing magazine. And it says, and it said right there on, on his chest, Field and Stream. So I pointed at it and I said, do you happen to fish? And he says, oh, yeah, fly fishing especially. And I was like, oh, get out of here. You know, I, me too, fly fishing. I said, where, where do you happen to fish? And so he told me a set of streams in, in the southeastern part of the state that I, I had not been aware of. And I was like, oh, that's it. You help me. And he got it. Now, here's the thing. I'm not talking about necessarily um, uh, like secret fishing holes, uh, which is great, but that's not what I'm talking about. My youngest son wanted to get into fly fishing. And suddenly I have a whole new set of streams that was going to allow me the opportunity to take him and develop some father son memories. Right. So this had deep, valuable, uh, this is deep, valuable information to me. And I explained it to him and the light bulb went in, went on over his head and he's like, I, I got it. Okay. Um, so a couple of days later I receive an email from him. He says, Nathan, will you send me your snail mail? I'd like to send you something. And so uh, I say, sure. A few days later after that, I get an envelope. I open it up and pull out from inside this little translucent box. I open it up and just short of two, inside or just short of two dozen hand tied fly fishing flies that he had made for me. And with it, a note that accompanied it that, that told me which flies for which stream. And some of them wow. are part of the year. Yeah, exactly. Now, here's the thing, and my point of telling you this, this story is that that was a number of years ago. But here I am relating it now because it made that much of an impact on me, that show of gratitude. And, and in the end, it didn't cost him anything but his time to make those, those flies. Right. So gratitude goes a long way. You know, and especially when, it, when it's specific, like I said, you know, highlight something in your conversation that you remember, especially something that may have been just off the cuff, for instance, like the Tom Brokaw conversation about how he played a little tennis, but it was just sort of one of those things you say. 
but that you highlight it, <laughs> you know, and magnify it. Right. And and that's what I like to suggest to people, you know, in that way. Being in radio, you get very creative that way uh, with people. And, and, and a lot of times, you know, the whole idea, for instance, uh, somebody might say, well, you don't seem to have the numbers. And, uh, well, how important are the numbers to you? Well, you know, the more eyes that I see, the better my chances. And I said, well, did you realize the better your message, the better your chances are? If I put you in front of 10,000 people and you've got a poor message, then I put you in front of 10,000 people with no result. If I put you in front of five people with a strong message, there's a good chance you'll get five people. There's a difference. Right. <laughs> there is so, a difference. Yeah, and, it, know, and it's really point, fun uh, sharing that kind of information with people to make them realize there may be a way that you see about, for instance, promoting your business, but here's the realities that I've seen and that I've learned from that might help you quite a bit to actually renegotiate and change the way you see this. And it's the same thing here with what we're talking about, that you may need a job. You're looking for work, obviously, so you can pay your bills. But your approach can be <clears throat> not only fun, educational, and as you said, it changed this one guy realizing, well, I don't have a budget, but that you've got something really valuable to offer the world. It's just a matter of pulling that out and sharing it. Exactly. exactly. Well, in his case, I mean, he shared, you know, the information around, uh, around the rivers. And here's the thing, too, you know, when it comes to networking, while we are gathering information, the thing is, is most of the time we, we need other people to know information about us as well. And so that is to your point, which is putting that additional message or that information out in front of them. Here's actually an experience that I had uh, in the last two weeks. I lead an online boot camp for a really large on, uh, outplacement firm. Uh, so these are uh, executives who have, are without a job and, and they're working with experts like me um, to kind of make their way along. And in, after one of the sessions, one of the people reached out to me to link on LinkedIn and she said, Nathan, I noticed on one of your slides today that you were a competitive swimmer. And I said, yeah, actually, you know, I swam throughout my youth and, and so forth and so on. And, and then she goes on to say that, well, my whole family turns out to be swimmers. So that's a small world already. And then she says her husband actually works with swimmers in, in, uh, in a business context. And I said, get out of here. Wow. She said, and she mentioned a couple of um, Olympians that he happened to work with. And I said, well, you know, it's funny. Here's a, a small world story. And here's my point, right? I'm putting information now in front of her. I said, here, here's an experience I had. Uh, 20 years ago when I was a professional actor, I had the opportunity to shoot a film in Bulgaria. And one of the guys who was in the film sat next to me and he asked me, hey, hey, I heard from the director that you were a swimmer. I said, yeah, I, I did. I was for them my whole youth and so forth. And he says, me too. And he asked me my events and asked me my times because, you know, competitors do this. And so I told him my events and my times. And, I, and he's like, oh, you know, that's cool. And I said, well, what about you, your events and times? And it turns out he had the same events, but his times were really, really low like world record breaking low. And I said so. I was like, dude, that's like world record. And he says to me, I know, I broke it. Well, he turned out to be the guy who, uh, if you've ever seen um, clips of people swimming the, the butterfly stroke, but breathing to their side, okay. he was one of the early pioneers of this thing and won the gold in 1992 and set the record in 91 in Perth, Australia. It completely shrunk our world. I hadn't talked to him in 20 years. And the next day he, he sent me a note on LinkedIn. But I wouldn't have been able to make that connection, uh, much less create a possible opportunity going forward, had I not put the information in front of him or her uh, in the first place. Nathan, you bring up something really valuable. Uh, I remember my experience, and it eventually led me to where I am today, where I'm sitting on the phone with someone with your experience and, and wealth of knowledge, uh, sharing with the listeners what it is they should know, and uh, certainly pick up a copy of the 20-minute networking meeting book. Uh, I'm, I'm sure people will find it invaluable, but I remember just when you were sharing that story about the swimmer was this, as I would find myself in situations where I would get to know somebody, and it would start off as just a casual conversation, and eventually I knew to ask questions just to learn about someone. And all of a sudden you'd realize, you know, I'm talking to one of the most interesting human beings that is around here, at least I think, and it would be neat if people could listen as this guy is sharing with me that, in fact, he was a NASA engineer. He was a former colonel in the United States Air Force, 
and going on and on and on, and I'm pulling this information out of it, and I'm thinking, man, this is just fascinating. And here, this is somebody who seemed unassuming in a hotel lobby, for instance, or maybe a a grocery store. You're getting bread. And so when you take a look at this whole networking thing, and sure, your goal and your agenda may be to get that career change. It may be to get that job that you need to have to pay the bills. But if you can put that aside just patiently for a little bit, you get to enjoy about how enriching your day becomes just getting to know someone else and allowing someone else the opportunity to get to know you as well. And it becomes a very colorful and fascinating world pretty fast if that's the worst part of the day (laughs) in networking that you can have. (laughs) Exactly. In the end, it's just about conversation and discussion. Uh, and, and the things that you talk about. And the things that we talk about are the things that we have in common. And when you realize that, and you realize that both sides are willing to do that, then you realize you're actually just helping each other. Because now you just formulate specific questions. You know, hey, but, you know, we were just talking about you moving to town, <clears throat> and I was thinking about moving into a new apartment. Like, what was your real estate experience like? Did you work with someone specific? Did you learn anything about the market that we weren't familiar with, you know, uh, before? whatever it may be. And that's it. We're just having discussion. And, and if you think about it, you know, when we sometimes have a, like a, a complaint session with one another, this happened and this happened and this happened. Well, if you just take the information that this happened and this, this happened, we learn the lessons, right? We learn the lessons and we make sure that we don't do X, Y, and Z because we've already learned through someone else that this happened. Or someone says, oh my gosh, you know, I had this idea when I was do- in my job search and I changed my resume around or I talked to different kinds of people, or I looked over here instead of over here. Really, you did that, and it worked. Yeah, we take that information, however consciously, but if you're conscious about really using the information, you will create a path for yourself, and that leads you forward. And so you can take the information, or like in the case that I gave, um, I put some information in front of that person who connected me with them. I didn't finish that, by the way. I just realized they knew each other. They actually worked with each other that Olympian and that person that I was talking to, and it shrunk the world. Um, but just, just the very conversations that we have is the stuff that we take and that we use. But if you use it and you're intentional about it and take the information, it will create a path for you, and, and it will lead you right to what you're looking for. Absolutely. Like they say, the power of intention, you know, where your thoughts go, your energy flows. And that's, uh, there's right. a bigger truth than exactly. that for sure. Now, speaking of flowing, how can people flow to a website and find out more about your work and being able to get the book, things like that? Yeah, well, you can, you can, you can just flow right over to uh, – my website is NathanAPerez.com. Um, and you can find the books on Amazon. You can get them on iTunes for your iPad. You can get the Kindle version if you're not already aware. Uh, just about any device that you have will allow you to still download the Kindle app. So you can see it there. And on the website uh, that I mentioned, NathanAPerez.com, you can also find the audio book. You know, and you can find me on LinkedIn too, by the way. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So NathanPerez.com. There should be pretty easy to find. The book is the 20-minute networking meeting, and I thought I'd just go ahead and throw this out there for you, Nathan, just in case. It's a consideration. Uh, do you have oh, a podcast you. that you do out there? Uh, not yet. Starting to work on one. There starting you to go. Work on one, and you can find that. <laughs> yeah, you'll find the info either on my website or on LinkedIn. Sounds good. Well, Nathan, thank you for taking the time to be on our program today. It's been a pleasure to talk with you. My pleasure. Thanks so much, Daniel, for having me. Have you a know. great rest of the week. You too. We want to thank you, the listeners out there, for tuning in. You can discover more at beyond50radio.com. That is the number 50. We encourage you to sign up for our weekly e-newsletter and stay up to date with what's going on in the world of Beyond 50 as well as our upcoming shows. I'm Daniel Davis. Thank you for joining us. This is the Beyond 50 radio program. And remember, wherever you are is where you should be. Have a great day.